today we're going to talk about respiratory motor units. We're going to talk about diaphragm. We're going to talk about the diaphragm. Today we're going to talk about a theory of mine. The respiratory motor unit theory. I will break it all down for you. So let's get into it. Hi everyone. You just saw a couple of the exercises I did. It takes me a lot of effort to, to get out of breath. And I'm not trying to brag here. Why is that? Because I train my respiratory motor units. And nobody talks about these. Most people think that running makes your lungs stronger. But here's the truth. Your lungs don't breathe. They can't. They're just air sacs. It's the muscles around them. Your diaphragm, which is under your lungs. Your intercostals, which is between your ribs and your abs. That expand and contract your lungs to make breathing possible. And when those muscles weaken, your VO2 max drops. Your endurance disappears. And eventually, you struggle to breathe as you get older. This is why so many people age poorly. They jog, they cycle, they do long distance training, thinking that it's enough to keep their VO2 max high. But then they wonder why their endurance is still declining, even though they train constantly, they jog, but their endurance still declines. The reason? They're losing the motor units in their breathing muscles. I don't run long distances, maybe it wasn't a blue moon. I don't spend hours jogging, but I keep my VO2 max high around 60 range, because I specifically train the muscles that control my breathing. Nobody talks about this. Nobody even thinks about it. But this is why people in their 60s, 70s, and 80s struggle to breathe, even if they work out. As we age, I said it many times, we lose motor units, both slow and fast motor units. This includes the motor units in your diaphragm. That's a muscle in the intercostals, your core, your entire core that expands and contracts your lungs. If you don't maintain these motor units, your breathing weakens, your VO2 max drops, and eventually you get out of breath doing simple tasks. This is why you see older people struggle just walking up the stairs. It's not just about heart and lung function. It's that they lost the muscle power to breathe efficiently. And this is why so many centenarians die of pneumonia. They physically cannot cough with enough force to clear up mucus from their lungs. Their breathing muscles are too weak. They don't die from old age. Well, some of them do, or they don't. There's no such thing. They, a lot of them die because they lost their respiratory motor units. This is why I train my abs every single day. I might miss a day here or so, but I train year round. Not for looks. I train my abs for breathing power. This is a quick routine I do. Maybe you could copy it. Maybe you could tweak it. Do whatever you like, but check it out. As you can see, everything I do is fast. Explosive every time I come up and by the way, you can't see it, but I exhale forcefully Like I do in a sprint. I do it quick though. I'm used to it As you can see, I do a lot of twists too. This is forces the intercostal muscles. That's the muscle between the ribs to stay strong so they can expand and contract my rib cage efficiently. Jogging won't do this. Cycling won't do this. You need direct core work to keep your breathing strong for life. You see the side planks. I lift my hips, I exhale. You just don't see it. This strengthens my diaphragm and keeps my breathing reflex strong.
hollow hold, for the core, for the diaphragm. You gotta work the diaphragm. See, you don't breathe hard. It protects you in later years because nobody does these. Nobody trains their diaphragm, their abs in later years. That's the real reason we lose those respiratory motor units that no one ever heard of. Let's go. Breathing isn't just an up and down motion. It's rotational, lateral, and forceful. You need all angles trained or you lose motor units in these muscles. Now let me talk to you about a theory I created called the Respiratory Motor Unit Activation Theory, RMUA for short. My theory states that maintaining and training fast twitch motor units in the respiratory muscles, specifically the diaphragm, which is located under the lungs, that helps it expand and contract the lungs. The intercostal muscles, like I mentioned, and the entire core is the missing key to preserving breathing power, VO2 max, and overall endurance as we age. Traditional fitness and longevity experts only focus on cardiovascular endurance training like zone two, hit, cycling, running, rowing to maintain their VO2 max, assuming that heart function and lung efficiency determine breathing ability. But my theory challenges this idea. It proves that VO2 max decline is not just about the lungs and cardiovascular system. It is also caused by the loss of motor units in the muscle responsible for breathing. Why is my theory completely different from anything ever documented? Let me break this down. Number one, no research or fitness methodology has ever connected fast twitch respiratory motor units to VO2 max decline in aging. By the way, there are studies that they did to see to determine how many fast motor units, fast twitch fibers are in your diaphragm. It's about 50-50, slow 50% fast. So you do have fast twitch motor units in there and fast twitch muscle fibers. And this is the problem. Especially, most people don't even use it. So if you use it, you lose it, number one. Number two, even, even if you use it or lose it, you still naturally lose the fast twitch muscle fibers and fast motor units in aging. This is the problem with, the, with this part. Nobody even does this. So you automatically, it's like a catch-22. That's why you need to slow their loss down. And that's why I train the way I do. Number two, there are studies on inspiratory, it's inhaling and expiratory exhaling training, which focus only on slow twitch endurance improvements, not the fast motor unit preservation. My RMUA theory shows that losing fast twitch motor units in the diaphragm, the intercostals and abs and core leads to weaker breathing, lower VO2 max and higher mortality risk, even in active individuals. Next one. It explains why centenarians die of pneumonia, not because of weakened lungs, but because they have lost the motor units needed to generate a forceful cough. How does my respiratory motor unit activation theory work? Lungs don't breathe on their own, like I said, muscles do. Your lungs are just air sacs. It's the diaphragm, intercostals, and the core that expands and contracts them. Aging leads to the loss of respiratory motor units just like in limb muscles. But because no one actively trains these muscles for speed and power, fast twitch respiratory motor units disappear faster than in other muscle groups. Traditional endurance training does not target these fast twitch motor units. Jogging, cycling, and even HIIT do not directly strengthen the fast twitch fibers in the diaphragm, intercostals, and core. These require explosive forceful movements specific to that area. If you don't train these motor units, you lose them. And once you lose them, you lose the ability to take strong breaths, forceful cough, and even maintain a high VO2 max. That's why with aging, no matter how hard you train, your VO2 max decreases. No matter how hard you train. 
The only way to preserve VO2 max and lifelong breathing power is to specifically train the fast switch respiratory motor units. This means explosive ab exercises with rapid forceful exhalations to activate fast switch diaphragm fibers. Dynamic movements like I showed in my video that engage the intercostals, the obliques for multi-directional breathing strength. Fast, high intensity core exercises that mimic the mechanics of sprinting and power breathing. This is why my respiratory motor unit activation theory is completely different from everything before it. No one has ever connected the loss of respiratory motor unit to VO2 max decline. All propose that explosive core training is the key to preserving breathing power. Ladies and gentlemen, this theory isn't just a, an hypothesis. It's an entirely new way of thinking about aging, longevity, and endurance. It's a missing piece that no expert, scientist, or fitness guru has ever addressed. Now, I want to talk to you as to why the respiratory motor units are unlike any other in the body. Motor units usually follow the Henneman size principle, but respiratory motor units are different. Let me explain. All motor units in the body usually follow a rule called the Henneman size principle. This principle states that when a muscle contracts, the body always recruits the smallest, weakest motor units first and only calls on the bigger, more powerful motor units if more force is needed. For example, imagine your muscles are like a group of office workers. The interns, the small motor units, handle easy tasks. They work all day answering emails. If more work comes in, the junior employees, the medium motor units, step in to help. But if a major crisis happens, only then do the senior executives, the big, powerful motor units, get involved. Once the crisis is over, the executives go back to resting and the interns continue doing their small jobs. This is how normal muscles in your entire body work. They only use the biggest, strongest motor units when absolutely necessary. But respiratory motor units violate this rule. They use a different system. Instead of following the Henneman size principle, respiratory motor units operate under something called the neuromechanical matching. This means that when your body needs to breathe, it doesn't recruit motor units based on size. It recruits them based on which ones do the job the most efficiently at that particular moment. Let me explain it in a different way. Imagine you have a fire station that sends out firefighters whenever there's a fire. The normal motor units, the Henneman size principle, work like a small town fire station. If there's a small fire, they send out one firefighter first. If the fire gets worse, they send more firefighters gradually, increasing the response level as needed. They never send the big fire trucks unless the fire is out of control. Now, respiratory motor units, the neuromechanical matching, work like a rapid response fire team. They don't follow the normal hierarchy. Instead of starting small and scaling up, they send out the most effective team immediately based on what would put the fire out fastest. This means they might skip over the smallest firefighters and immediately use the ones who can do the job best at that particular moment. This is how your breathing muscles work. They don't activate motor units in order size. They activate the ones that make the breathing the most efficient at that moment. Now, why is this a big deal and why no one talks about it? Because respiratory motor units don't follow the normal recruitment rule. They are more vulnerable to failure with age. In other muscles, when you lose motor units, the body compensates by recruiting bigger ones later. But in respiratory muscles, there is no backup plan. Once you lose respiratory motor units, you lose them for good. This weakens breathing, lowers VO2 max, and increases the risk of respiratory failure. This is why aging weakens breathing. It's not just lung stiffness. It's because respiratory motor units disappear, and they don't follow the normal rules of muscle recruitment. By the way, no one on YouTube, in fitness blogs, or in longevity science has ever discussed this. This is why my respiratory motor unit activation theory is groundbreaking. To close it up, ladies and gentlemen, if you stuck around this far, this is a very serious matter when we age. No matter how much you jog, even the older guys that jog long distances, their VO2 max drops. They, no one, no one over 60, 70, 80, trains their abs or trains their diaphragm. No one. I mean, think about it for a second. Think about it. These is what helps your lungs go in and out. Once you lose these, this is why you must maintain 
we have fast motor units in our entire body. Not just here, legs, every single muscle in your body. The diaphragm is hidden. It's inside under your lungs. It's made up of 50% fast twitch muscle fibers, which fast motor units. We must slow down their loss. We can't fully stop this, but we must slow down their loss. This is why when you're aging, even if you jog, you don't have to jog as much. As long as you keep this strong, you will continue to high, have high VO2 max. I do. I do. I don't jog. Many ones in a blue moon. I do a lot of sprints, a lot of hits, but I also do my abs to make sure I cover all the angles. I leave no stones unturned. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for watching my video. Maybe you enjoyed this. Maybe it will help you. Maybe it will open up your eyes. Have a wonderful day. I see you again in my next video.